So about a month ago, someone reached out to me on Reddit asking if I could build them an accessible gaming pad because they have a hand deformation, meaning they can only game with a single thumb. Now, the problem with that on a normal board is that when you're gaming with a single thumb, you're going to be colliding with other keys because they're not designed for people who only game with a single thumb. They're designed for pretty much everyone else. That's what's so cool about hand-wired boards is that you can basically do anything. And this was a cool project that I really wanted to take on because it can help someone out there a lot. Here's what I designed. And you can see that this is a little bit different. This will also work as a normal macro pad if you do want to build it yourself. The files are available for free. But this is specifically for this person so that they can actually game in a more comfortable way. But this here is designed in such a way that the keys are spaced out further apart in order to combat that issue of where you won't collide as easily with the other keys. But then also this layer, this layer, and this layer are all separate heights so that you can easily locate where you are based on height. So I think what we wanna do now is just jump in and start building it. Here is a little heat set insert, and we're just gonna start putting these in. So now what we have to do is we have to put the switches in. I am gonna glue the switches in on this board because I am sending it to someone. So normally I wouldn't because I can deal with pulling them out on my own if I do accidentally pull one out. But since I am sending this to someone, I don't want them to have to deal with that. So I am gonna glue them in. Now the switches I'm gonna be using in here are these NK Silky Yellows. And the reason I chose these switches is that I have a lot of them on hand, but also they're a very smooth switch with a fairly light actuation. So when gaming with a single thumb, they should be pretty good to actually make that accessible and not too hard or straining to actually use. They want it a green and black color theme so we're just going with dsa green keycaps along with the green back plate so it'll kind of look like this once it's all together so now at this point you can probably start to see how those height layers are different here so they'll make it very easy to locate where you are on the board all right so there they are they're all glued in now as you can see and what we have to do next is we have to actually link them all on ground because this is going to be a direct wired board, meaning I don't need to use diodes. I'm just going to send basically all the pins to ground and then each key will individually get its own pin on the Arduino. And it's just a nice way to do this because I don't have to use diodes. And especially when you're doing something like this, it's a pain to actually have to bend the wire to get the diodes in there. So direct pin is a lot better. We will talk about this later in case I didn't mention it yet. This is for an aviator connector because we're going to be doing a custom cable on this as well. But let's just do that now where we actually wire everything up to the ground pin. Now for this, I'm just going to be using, I believe this is 18 gauge brass wire. Now you can see, just kind of get it like that. I'm going to actually also do here is I'm going to bend these pins over it to kind of really secure it in place. So you can see there that I kind of bent those pins over so that now it's actually locking onto it. Now we'll just solder it. I'm gonna be using my trusty Kester solder. Finally found this roll in my basement. Um, it's like a $40 roll of solder and I lost it. I was pretty mad about that, but I found it. So it's all good now. So that's one half of the wiring done right there. So now all we have to do is send each key to a pin on the controller and then connect the actual custom cable. And this build's done. So pretty simple to solve a pretty challenging problem. So you can kind of see that this wire here is what's gonna be sent to ground. So we'll just put a wire on this and send it to ground on the controller. And then each pin will go to another pad on the actual controller. So we're about 50% of the way there now. Of course, for this, I'm going to be using just Ethernet wire like I normally use. And we're going to just start from the top left. Just go across each row to each pin pretty much straight down on the controller. So very simple wiring here. I am also going to take these wires and wrap them around a piece of straight wire just so I can get a very secure connection to the pin. You can kind of see there if this focuses right there that it's like really locked on. This would also be a good time to mention that I'm not actually mounting this controller inside the case anywhere. I'm actually just gonna run a cable from here into the aviator connector and then that aviator connector out to the computer. This way you don't have to worry about the actual connector here breaking off. It'll just be stored inside and there won't be any stresses put on it. So honestly, that was a pretty simple one to solder up. Now all we have to do is we have to do the cable and then this one's done. So a pretty quick build here. So all I'm gonna do for this cable here is I'm gonna take an aviator connector right here and we're gonna put this through the actual case. Tighten it on down and you can see right there it is. So it'll go like that. So basically all I'm gonna do for this part here is I need to take this cable you see right here I need to match each one of these to a pin on here and then do the same with the other USB that I'm going to run on the outside. So pretty simple. I'm just going to kind of do it because it's only going to take a few minutes to do this and it's not really that much to show. But basically the pins on this side need to match the external and that's all you really need to do there. You can see I glued the aviator connector in here and I also hot glued this in place. So that's the internals. There's a lot of hot glue everywhere. 
but everything should be pretty secure now. And this cable is also hot glued. So that will just plug into there and then go to the computer and that's it. So what we're gonna do now is close it up and this build is complete. There's our custom cable right there. Now what we have to do is put on the back to this, which is very simple. We just take the back. These are four millimeter M2 screws because the longer ones were too long for this actual build. So just like that, there is a completed macro pad for gaming with an accessibility issue. And that's pretty cool, I think. So let's put the keycaps on. Pop those on. And then what we need to do is put on the rubber feet. Now, my only concern with this board is that since it is so light, it may move around a little bit, but I'm hoping with these feet, it won't actually do that. So we should be okay. So that is the finished little macro pad. So gaming on that like this would be technically possible. It's just pretty wide, but it is designed to game like that, which as you can see, feels pretty good actually. I think I could game like that. You can see also that it has a different height for each key, so everything's pretty good there. And then it also has this custom cable that will kind of just plug right in and then tighten on. And I think it kind of completes the whole look of like the cyber look. So hopefully this video was easy to follow or coherent enough. It's been a very busy week for me and I'm recording this pretty late at night on Saturday, but it feels really good to finally have this here after a month and a half or so of actually talking to them and kind of working out what will work for them. And hopefully it will solve their issue where they can actually game in a more accessible way, which leads me to the next thing I want to talk about, which is why this is so cool. In the hand wiring world, this is pretty much the only way you can actually do stuff like this. And it's what I love about hand wiring is that it enables you to really do anything you want with these boards. Now, I talked to them about actually doing maybe a foot pedal, and we kind of mutually agreed that it wouldn't be the best for this first iteration. But you could say run another aviator connector off to some foot pedals to give more accessible options for feet use to give more keys there. And there's just a lot of stuff you can do with these boards that you can't do with a traditional PCB board, at least super easily. Like this took basically two hours to just kind of put together. And I have a board here that should solve their problem of being able to game with just a thumb. Now, with that said, that's really all I got for you today. Hopefully this video is pretty interesting and hopefully it maybe inspires some people to start doing some accessible boards or maybe just even make another board. I don't know. Hopefully you enjoyed it. But with that said, I'll see you next time.